When I originally reviewed the Tiger 800, I did say I really like the exhaust, and although it's one of the things that people change, first of all, when they start modifying a bike, this bike probably didn't need it because the stock exhaust was so good. Having said that, I was looking at decatting the bike and changing the header. Now, I had a look at what was available on the market. That's where I came across a Lex Tech. Their kit looked to be very well produced, and it was actually quite a lot cheaper than some of the competition out there. So I got in touch with the guys to ask them a few questions, and they suggested that I fit one, see what it's like, show you how it's fitted, and give it a full test. So I went from going to just fitting a decat header to now fitting a complete system. To keep the video concise, I won't necessarily show you every single nut and bolt. I'll talk through what has to come off and what has to go on because I've got the XCA, I'm gonna to have to take the skid pan off and I think the engine bars as well. But I will show all the torque settings for putting everything back together. Before I get started with the install, the video this week is brought to you by Autodoc. Autodoc are a huge moto and auto parts online store. They stock and dispatch to 26 countries a huge range of parts. Autodoc also have a great returns policy, so you've got up to 200 days to return the item. And to make everything super easy, there is also an Autodoc app which you can download. I'll leave a link in the description, and I just want to thank Autodoc for supporting this week's video. So when you order the complete kit, you obviously get everything you require in that kit. Here is the three into one header. Looks really well made. A little bit chromey and shiny for me, but this is going to blue and change colour as things go on. And I did think about uh, having this ceramic coated before I put it on, but I just wanted to show you the install with exactly as it comes. You also get the mid pipe, which is the part that effectively replaces the cat and the connector to the end can. And I went for this one, which with the carbon end cap, I think is gonna look really smart. And already I can feel that this is possibly gonna be lighter than the stock ones, but I will weigh them when I take them off. And then you have everything else that you need, exhaust clamps, uh, pipe clamp, a tube of exhaust sealant, and they also supply the OEM Triumph cross washers for the manifold to cylinder head joint. So everything is in the kit that you need. I've got the bike up on the stand to make things easier. Let's get cracking. Having had a look, I reckon I can actually get the header out without taking these crash bars off. It looks like there's gonna be enough room to move it here. I've not done this before, and so you're kind of coming along on the journey with me, but definitely to be able to maneuver this, this needs to come off. Twelve mil socket to undo the four bolts underneath. Next is the shield for the cat. It's just going to make things easier having that out of the way. And that's about it at this end for the moment. We'll start at the back then, get the silencer off, and then see how easy it is to manoeuvre this manifold out of the way. So the end can is an easy removal. 10mm bolt on the clamp here to loosen that, and then a 12mm nut and bolt here once that's out of the way and this is loosened off, you should be able to lift that up and move it. And there we go, that's out of the way. And already I can feel that's quite heavy, so I'm gonna do a little weight comparison. And arguably the most difficult part now, which is getting these six header nuts off. The outer ones are not too bad from either side. The middle one is a little bit of a reach, but you should be able to get a socket up through the middle here to do that. This is where actually taking these crash bars off would make it slightly easier because you've got a bigger swing on your spanner. So it might help to put a little bit of WD-40 or penetrating fluid on these bolts. So I've just given those a squirt. I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea, uh, leave that for a bit, come back, and then we should be ready to get the header and the cat out of the way. Right, with the O2 center now undone, obviously that's the first thing you'll put into the new pipe. Uh, we should then, he says, if everything's clear, be able to drop that out. And there is the header. I'll stick that on the scales and we'll just compare how that is to the Lextech version. <laughs> now, 
Next job is to get the copper washers out of the cylinder head, put the new ones in. There's kind of a flat side on the back that goes in towards the cylinder head and you've got two little tabs that they just bend over and hold it in place. Make sure you do replace these though because if you reuse the old ones you're not going to get a good enough seal. I won't go through it all in any great detail because it is just the reverse of what we've already done to get to this stage. So I guess it might be easier if I just get this exhaust on and then show you what it looks like and more importantly what it sounds like. Now I'm not going to lie, this is a bit of a ball ache to do just to get access to those nuts. It would be easier if you took this off because it just gives you a little bit more room to do it. But with a combination of sockets and spanners I've been able to get those on and get them torqued up to the right level. The next stage is to put this middle pipe on. There are no gaskets that go inside here. Lextech provide a sealant, so some assembly paste. Wet the pipe a little bit, slip it on, clean off any excess with water, do the clamps up, leave that to dry for half an hour or so. Uh, by the time you've got all that together, you can then get the engine on, get some heat through it, and that heat will help to make that seal. And of course, don't forget to put the oxygen sensor back into here. And uh, probably easier to do this while this is loose. So that's the center part done. I've put the clamp on, tightened it up, but not fully tight yet. And put the bolt at the back here. And I've left that not, again, not fully tight. Uh, so that I can make sure that I get this extra pipe and the tailpiece in. At this point, it's just worth putting these in place just to test fit everything. The kit does come with a nut and bolt for here, but I'm going to use the stock one because uh, I just like the finisher that's on that and it's the, the correct length, so there's no problem with fitting that on here. But before I do that, I'm going to take the silencer off, get the clamp on here and the exhaust paste and the same for this. And then uh, that's it. Then we can um, get it outside and see what it sounds like. As you can see, the exhaust is clearly smaller than the stock ones. There is a removable baffle. You access that from the screw hole underneath. And then the section in the middle just pulls out. I tried it. It is quite a bit louder. And I think riding with the baffle in is more than loud enough. So to give you an example of this is what it's like under load. It's always difficult to get a decent recording of an exhaust. And unfortunately the weather didn't help. The rain made it quite tricky. So this is the best I could do. Okay, so in summary, we've established that the system is physically smaller. It is indeed lighter, almost half the weight of the stock exhaust. And to be fair, the stock exhaust coming in at just over eight kilos is pretty decent as well. What about cost? Well, this system I fitted was the VP1 and that cost 433 pounds and 49 pence. You've got the option if you just want to buy the downpipe and the midsection, that'll set you back 229.99 and obviously you can keep the stock end can. Or if you just want the end can and the pipe and keep with your cap, that will set you back 202 pound 49. It's worth noting that all of these parts come with a lifetime guarantee first impressions when riding the bike were good it certainly opened up the pipe and you do get a nicer sound out of that triple which sounded pretty awesome to start with anyway uh, being wet I didn't really give it a chance to give it a real hard run and kind of feel if there was any difference it felt maybe a little bit peppier in the mid but that might just be a placebo effect I don't think there'll be any need for a remap it's not a massive change to the exhaust system there's no changes on the induction side there is an option supposedly to allow the ecu to start to relearn the fueling and the process for that is to start the engine from cold don't touch the throttle leave it running until the fan kicks in 
and then continue to leave that to idle for 12 minutes and this will give the sensor a chance to check out what's going on with the fueling and adjust itself within a specific tolerance level but my bike is going in for a service next week so I'll have a chat with the Triumph technicians and see what they say I've also very kindly been offered the opportunity by Lex Tech to go down to their headquarters in Exeter and put the bike on their new dyno and we can have a look at some of the readouts from that so that's something that I could build into a follow-up video and obviously give some feedback on how the exhaust has performed over the longer term and obviously in terms of build quality it all looks very good going together but again that's not something I'm going to tell until I've been out riding it for a while so I think there's certainly a case for a follow-up video but I've been impressed with what I've seen so far I've tried to keep the video quite concise I hope you've enjoyed it and all that leaves me to say is until next time thanks for watching take care ride safe and i'll see you soon bye